What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we are in the new 2021 Genesis GV80, courtesy of Jack Giambalvo Genesis in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so of course, wanted to check this one out because this is Genesis's first SUV they have ever built. And that is super exciting to me all new model for Genesis. And this one has actually already began to start racking up awards from different publications as well. It does come with America's best warranty. In addition to that, being five year, 60,000 mile bumper to bumper, 10 year, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You do also have three years of complimentary maintenance to save you a little bit of money there as well with the GV80 and really all Genesis products. So that's always nice. Plus you get the Genesis experience. What that is essentially is whenever you need an oil change or a tire rotation, shirt or essentially whenever you need to go to the dealership you don't have to because all you need to do is just call them up and they actually bring a loaner to your house or your place of work they drop it off for you and they take your vehicle and then they return it to you when they are done with it so you actually never have to leave and it is especially important in times like we are living in right now and even after that that service is still there it was there before the pandemic it's going to be there afterwards and so essentially the gv80 is going to compete with vehicles like the bmw x5 mercedes-benz GLE and of course we will be going over everything about this one today testing everything out from acceleration to braking to steering feel to ride quality to sound system exhaust clip and so on so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2021 GV80 first one being the 2.5T starting at $48,900 2.5T Advanced, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $52,800. 2.5T Prestige for $57,050. Then you have the 3.5T for $59,150. 3.5 Advanced for $64,350. 3.5T Advanced Plus, which actually is the one and only trim level that you can get a third row on for the GV80. That one starts at $65,050. Then there's the 3.5T Prestige prestige for $70,950. And so for the 3.5T trim levels, all-wheel drive is going to come standard on all of those. For the 2.5T trim levels, it actually comes standard as a rear-wheel drive configuration, but if you wanted to add all-wheel drive, simply add $5,750 to any of those prices. But so then as I alluded to in the pricing there, you guys could probably tell there are two different engine configurations for the GV80. First one being the one we have today, and that is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 300 horsepower at 5800 rpm 311 pound feet of torque available from the power band of around 1600 to 4000 rpm again power center rear wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out in a little bit here red line comes in at 6200 rpm 0 to 60 in 6.4 seconds we'll give that a shot later here mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 25 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel but so the other engine configuration being a 3.5 liter twin turbo v6 375 horsepower at 5800 rpm 391 pound feet of torque available from the power band of 1300 to 4500 rpm power sent to all wheels only that is strictly an all-wheel drive configuration with that engine setup red line 6200 rpm again 0 to 60 approximately six seconds flat with mpg numbers at 18 in the city 23 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do the paddle shifter test and the acceleration test i do want to mention there are drive modes for the gv80 including comfort snow eco sport and custom so to actually adjust those driving modes there's actually a circular dial directly behind the cup holders and so when you hit them, essentially that will adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, steering sensitivity, suspension settings, and also the gauge cluster to a certain degree as well. Did want to also mention just to the bottom right hand corner of that circular dial for the drive modes, there's also an all wheel drive lock button. If you go with one of the all wheel drive configurations, I've used that on Hyundai products and Genesis products before. It's amazing, especially if you live in Pennsylvania in the snow, you know that you're going to constantly have all wheel drive rather than the intelligent all-wheel drive system that kicks in when it feels it is necessary not that that was a bad thing it's just a little peace of mind there for you as well so that's always good in the snow but anyways 
Now that I've mentioned all of that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's first test out the paddle shifters and see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, we're in first gear, turning out onto the road. Here we go. That sound. Wow. Paddle shifters are quick. Go figure. Usually with SUVs, I say it that way because usually with SUVs, you don't always get quick reacting paddle shifters and quite honestly it surprised me because in a car like the Genesis it's a luxury vehicle not that you would need quick reacting paddle shifters but you got them that's kind of cool not only that you can of course also use paddle shifters when you're going down a hill perhaps and it's snowing outside you can use them to downshift do a little engine braking rather than actually hitting the brakes going down a hill so you're less inclined to slide off that hill so it's kind of a safety feature in itself in my mind as well so wow paddle shifters actually do surprisingly react quick well done genesis anyways Next thing I want to do here is a quick little acceleration test here in our GV80. And I'm going to give back full control to the GV80 and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, here we go, another acceleration. Huh, there it is. <laughs> All right, definitely no issues emerging onto the highway. Honestly, that is plenty powerful. I mean, you do have the upgraded engine setup available for you if you do want a little more power, but let me tell you, unless you're racing this thing, this is really probably all you're gonna need unless you wanted that extra power, of course, but plenty of an acceleration here in the GV80 with the 2.5 liter. I can tell you guys that right now. So that is definitely a good thing. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so that braking configuration is actually going to differ dependent upon which engine configuration you go with, believe it or not. 14.2 inch ventilated front disc for the 2.5 liter, 14.9 inch ventilated front disc for the 3.5 liter in the back it's going to be the same though 14.2 inch solid rear disc overall when it comes to that 60 to 0 stopping distance again it's going to differ obviously slightly but not by much 60 to 0 stopping distance for the 2.5 liter comes in at 117 feet which honestly is insanely respectable usually with suvs it comes in at the 120s a lot of times even the 130s 139 feet for the volkswagen atlas so 117 is brilliant quite honestly but having said that the 3.5 liter stops you from 60 and only 112 feet so that's even better but definitely no issues with the braking whatsoever and that's usually something i tend to critique i know at least hyundai with so genesis definitely tuned the braking feel quite nicely here in the gv80 so i'm a huge fan of the braking feel kind of surprised me quite honestly then touching on suspension and handling gv80 will give you an independent front and rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars also electronic limited slip differential which essentially is going to send torque between the left and right rear wheels which increases traction for both on and off-road actually so it's going to give you a little better handling characteristics on the back road in PA like I am on right now so that's always a good thing as well also though an electronically controlled adaptive suspension itself Genesis does their adaptive suspension a little bit differently than a lot of other manufacturers and so essentially the way this one works is it's going to use a forward-facing camera which scans the road and helps detect any kind of adjustments that are necessary at any given time to the suspensions damping force so essentially that is going to help absorb a lot of road imperfections and create the smoothest ride possible with the Genesis GV80 and so overall though when it comes to the ride quality it's pretty much as expected I will say I don't feel like it's quite as nice as the Mercedes or the BMW but still it is plenty fine although I think it could be better maybe if Genesis were to add an air suspension on top of that in the future to give it an even better ride quality that would be nice as well but having said that it is still going to be perfectly fine for the majority of people out there looking for an SUV like the GV80 so we'll say that when it comes to steering feel i love it that was one of the first things i noticed when i got in this one not only are the 10 and 2 grips on the steering wheel itself bolstered quite nicely they're a little bit on the thicker side much more so than i'm used to in genesis products so i loved that but also it is very weighty at slow speeds and then it definitely loosens up as you get higher up 
in speed but i love the way to your steering feel on the gv80 again it definitely took me by surprise i wasn't expecting that and usually with suvs you have looser steering feels and they're not as enjoyable to drive because of that but that is not the case with the gv80 so i wanted to emphasize that it actually is enjoyable to drive this thing partly due because that heavier steering feel the better helps point you in the direction that you want to go gives the driver more feeling of being in control so definitely a big fan of that as far as cabin noise goes you guys can probably hear it there's not a whole lot of exterior noise is coming into the cabin the only thing i would say is when you really get on it you do have some engine noise coming into the cabin but other than that once you hit highway speeds there isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin whatsoever and there's also an active noise cancellation system that comes with the gv80 so that contributes to that of course as well by the way if you were unfamiliar with that actual system is it essentially measures cabin sound levels at any given time and produces an opposing sound wave to help counter that noise so that's partly why we have have such a serene cabin here in the gv80 then touching on visibility i actually could see plenty fine the second row headrests do protrude up slightly i guess you could say into that visibility but really it's pretty much as expected for any suv so no issues with the visibility there for me also wanted to mention though rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the gv80 for all trims meaning when this one detects any kind of mist or rainfall it is going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers kind of like automatic headlights so there's just one less thing you got to worry about there that's always nice and if you wanted a head-up display assisting with visibility yet again simply go with one of the prestige packages that is going to project your speed speed limit and safety information onto your windshield you can of course adjust different colors of that head-up display as well which i always think is pretty cool with genesis so did want to also mention that as well but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this all new 2021 genesis gv80 all right and so here she is you guys the new 2021 genesis gv80 finished in adriatic blue with the dune interior very nice color combination on this one. So let me go ahead and start up front as always with the GV80 here. Large aluminum front grill coming standard on this one. Definitely a very nice look to it. Definitely a lot better than a lot of the other plastic front grills that are out there right now on the road. So love the look to that. Love the chrome perimeter surrounding the bottom portion of that front grill as well. Front air curtains to the side. You guys can see that to better help direct air around the wheel and tire combination. Giving you a little better aerodynamics there as well. Best part about the front end though is the quad beam LED headlights coming standard for every single trim level. Yes, there's no halogens, of course, on the Genesis GV80. Gotta love that. Of course, those headlights do come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights coming standard as well. One of the coolest things about these headlights is when you put on the turn signals, the LED daytime running lights essentially turn into those orange turn signals. They look so good up front and I'll get more into the turn signals as we go on because there's a cool element to the side of the GV80 with those turn signals as well but overall a very original very nice look to the front end especially with the grill design and let me show you guys something real quick you guys probably know where the grill design came from you see that Genesis logo and the shape of that Genesis logo that is essentially where the grill design came from it's the exact same shape up front on that front grill in case anybody didn't know so little cool fun fact for you let's go ahead now and make our way to the side of the gv80 so but now since we are around to the side of this one taking a look up top you guys can probably see those silver roof rails coming standard on this one chrome window surrounds also standard as well chrome slats in the front fender let me show you guys that and actually let me turn on the turn signals for this part and show you guys that as well because part of those slats is actually led lighting which are used for the turn signals it looks absolutely amazing up there so it's kind of functional if you think of it that way definitely like the look but anyways those chrome accents do continue towards the bottom portion of the gv80 as well and they tie around to the back and there are some chrome accents on the door handles there then take a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated and they are power folding as well coming standard across the board and of course in case anybody didn't know rear privacy glass as well does come standard on the gv80 
And take a look down at the wheel design on this one. It is going to differ slightly dependent upon the trim level that you go with. 19 inch alloys is going to be the standard configuration. Then you jump up to 20 inch alloys for the advanced packages and 22 inch alloys for the prestige packages. And of course, all of them wrapped in Michelin all season tires. So definitely a very nice setup there. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the GV80. And so of course, body colored shark fin antenna located on the roof of this one. Just below that rear spoiler, just below that rear window wiper as well. Also love the Genesis lettering spelled out horizontally. It's definitely a nice design element there. You do have some all wheel drive badging located on that rear lift gate as well. Of course, LED quad taillights to match the headlights, a very original look to the back end. I don't think I remember anything else on the road right now looking like the back end of the Genesis GV80, which is a good thing. Gotta be different, I absolutely love that. Just below it all though, dual exhaust outlets surrounded in quad trapezoidal tips. I love that look as well. And they're kind of integrated into that rear bumper as well, giving it a more high-end look. But nonetheless, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always. Here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back of the GV80, there are several different ways you can go about opening that rear lift gate. It is a hands-free power lift gate for every single trim level. So the way I would particularly do it more than likely is just use the hands-free method. That is going to be the simplest way. There is though a button on the key fob itself. That is yet another way. There is also a button by the driver's side left knee. And there is actually kind of a hidden button located on the rear window wiper back there as well. In case anybody was curious where the actual actual physical button is on the lift gate. That's where it's going to be located. It's kind of hidden, kind of integrated into that back end there. And so, but once opened up, as far as cargo capacity goes, there actually isn't any official cargo capacity numbers for the Genesis GV80 yet, but I'm still going to show it to you guys. Genesis has said it can maybe come in at up to 84 cubic feet, which would put it above the Mercedes GLE and BMW X5. But again, no official numbers have been released quite yet. So this is how much space that is actually in the cargo area but it gets better than that. There is also cargo tie down hooks back there. There is also LED cargo lighting. A lot of times halogens are put back there. So I love that LEDs are still in the cargo area as well. It's pretty nice. Also, there is a cargo area cover back there as well, not to mention in floor storage, which is pretty nice, which is where you keep the cargo cover if it wasn't in use, of course. So overall, pretty much everything you could possibly want in that cargo area. But if that was not enough space, of course, that second row seating does fold down and that is a good bit of extra space once again then if you needed it. But so now making our way to the rear legroom again, there is a third row configuration for the GV80, but that is only going to be available with the 3.5 liter advanced plus package starting at $65,050. Otherwise, you are simply going to get the two row configuration, which is what we have today. But you can imagine with that third row, rear legroom is going to be kind of tight back there. But with the second row, that comes in at 38.7 inches, which essentially is right in the middle of the pack when you compare it to the GLE, which comes in at 40.9 in the X5, which comes in at 37.4. So 38.7 inches. This is what that actually looks like. I'm an even six feet tall. I am sitting behind my own driving position. So definitely decent amount of space back there. Tri-zone climate control is going to come with the prestige trim levels, and that gives the rear passengers the ability to set their own temperatures back there. Rear window sunshades, believe it or not, come standard on every single trim level across the board. I absolutely love that. A lot of times with the rear window sunshades, it's only available on the upper trim level. So I love that the GV80 put it on every single trim level across the board. That's especially nice when you have newborns coming home for the hospital or even small children to keep the sun out of their eyes. So definitely a nice feature there. Also wanted to mention heated second row seats come with the prestige packages. That's always nice to spoil the rear passengers. Also there of course are some front seat bat map pockets. There's a 115 volt power outlet back there. I was surprised to see that. That's pretty cool dual USB charging ports, not just one, but two. So if you have two kids, both of them can stay connected and charged up. Also rear center armrest with cup holders back there as well. And I do like the wood trim found on the side doors back there too. So overall a very nice place to be, not to mention the LED interior lighting found on the roof of this one as well. So overall, 
Very nice setup for the rear passengers there. But now let's make our way to the front seats. Leatherette seating actually does come standard on the GV80. However, if you were to go with any of the packages, Advanced or the Prestige, you will get full leather seating. 12-way power adjustable front seats coming with the standard and Advanced. 16-way power adjustable driver's seat with the Prestige. Smart posture seating coming with all trim levels. Essentially, that is where the GV80 kind of takes your height and body measurements and then creates the best possible driving position for you. It's kind of an interesting feature there. Heated and ventilated front seats coming with all trim levels. There's also an ergo motion seat with the prestige package only. And that essentially uses seven different air cells within the seating, which can provide additional support when needed, like adjusting the side bolsters around the back roads here in Pennsylvania, give you a little better support there. So that's kind of cool. It is not a full massaging seat like Mercedes Benz does, but still I love that it's there though. Seats are plenty comfortable. I will say that my short test drive today, the seating has been plenty comfortable. Well, it's due in part because you got lumbar adjustments, tons of adjustments for this seating, basically. Memory settings as well is going to come standard on all trim levels. So if you have two adults driving the GV80 in your family, those buttons are located on the driver's side door there. Let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. I love the oval design to it. You see no other steering wheels like that on the road besides what Genesis does right now, at least. It is leather wrapped, of course. That's pretty much as expected at this price point. It is heated, though, as well for all trim levels, and that's located in the digital portion of the climate control settings up front here, and I'll get more into that in a second, but that's pretty cool that they're heated across the board as well. And again, the 10 and two grips are actually bolstered a little bit more on the thicker side, so I absolutely love that as well. Give this driver a better feeling of being in control. It's a very nice steering wheel. Taking a look at the startup now, let me first start by showing you guys the key because once again, it gets better. Genesis logo on the one side, of course. When you flip it over, you got lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch. There is also the remote start, which is the circular hold button in the top portion of the key there. And then there is Smart Pack. Yes, it's just like the commercial. You also have Smart Park on the GV80. So if you were in a tight parking spot and you needed to get out and you did not want to bang your door against the vehicle beside you, simply hold down that Smart Park feature. It is going to pull the GV80 out for you and then simply just let it go. And when you let it go, it will stop. Or if it gets too close to an object, it's also going to stop then as well. So definitely a very nice feature there. And of course, the Hyundai Sonata did kind of premiere that, but now Genesis has it on all of their products as well. So that's pretty cool. I love that key. Also, digital key does come standard on every single trim level. That's kind of nice. You can download an app on your phone. And so just hold your phone up to the door and that's going to unlock it and lock it for you. And then put your phone just in front of the cup holders here. And that's how you're going to be able to start this one up. Let's say if you were to lose your keys or something like that. But at the same time, it does take a little bit longer than the hands-free access when you have the key fob on you. So if it's raining outside, I have found personally that that's the only downside about using the digital key at least. But anyways, let's now go ahead and take a look at the gauges here. You do have your speed speedometer all the way to your left. There is a digital portion all the way to your right. There is a 3D digital gauge cluster that is available as well. And that, that is the digital gauge cluster that is going to adjust the driving modes as I was alluding to earlier in the video. But for this one, it is definitely still pretty nice. When you turn the turn signal on, you have that blonde spot monitor that displays within the digital portion of the gauges. So I did like that about the gauges. It also, of course, tells you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your trip A, trip B. The tachometer is going to be the digital portion. And you do, of course, have a ton of different settings you can control up there as well. There's your average fuel economy, tire pressure information if you wanted it. There's when you need your next oil change. Change, there's radio settings really the list goes on so quite a bit of information you could check out up there however I think the 3D digital gauges are much cooler than this setup. Anyways, touching on overall interior quality, panoramic sunroof, believe it or not, coming standard on every single trim level. So both the front passengers and the rear passengers have a view of the sky. That's always nice. LED interior lighting, as I was mentioning, does come standard across the board as well. Home line controls, also standard, found on the bottom portion of our frameless rear view mirror. That's kind of a feature in itself. A lot of times it comes with black plastic surrounding it. So I like the frameless design there to it. Wireless phone charger, all trim levels get that. Wood trim with a matte finish, again, all trim levels get that. It's not only found on the doors, also around the circular dial and shifter and all that stuff in the center here as well. So definitely a very upscale look there. Multicolor ambient lighting coming standard. You gotta love that as well. 
gives you 64 different color options so you can really configure this one to make it your own dual zone climate control coming with the standard and advanced packages tri zone climate control again coming with the prestige and like i was mentioning to you guys earlier all of these climate control settings in front of the uh, cup holders here it is going to be all a digital setup so you can simply just touch let's say the heated seat buttons and that is going to turn on the heated seat but i love that it's all digital it's like welcome to the new age here this is how it's supposed to be done and this looks so cool up here so i like that it's digital Digital there but with Genesis I've noticed this in the past it's really the attention to detail that I absolutely love take for instance the foot pedals they're not aluminum foot pedals but there's actually a design to the foot pedals there's like indentations in there so I think that is pretty cool it's one of the first things I noticed and those little indentations they really do create a nice finish to this one like for example around all of the controls to control what's on the infotainment screen which we'll get to in a second here there's a nice groove design there it's also around the shifter as well and the shifter is like a clear kind of look it's like a 3d look to it so I absolutely love the style of the shifter it's also some indentations on the actual air vents to control them as well not to mention the push button start you guys can see the perimeter of that push button start there's a nice design to that as well there's some nice stitched leather on the doors that looks really really good and really high end I love the contrast between the dark navy bluish and the dune interior that we have here today it looks absolutely amazing wireless phone charger in front of the shifter dual usb charging ports as well of course you have your cup holders again with that design being the perimeter of the cup holders it's really a nice look to it just below the cup holders though you have even more storage it keeps getting better so if you wanted to hide i don't know a wallet or maybe a small purse or a birthday gift i don't know you could put it under here and you really can't see it it's kind of out of sight out of mind there's a 12 volt power outlet within that little storage area as well so like that little hidden section with the gv80 there and of course within the center armrest there is a decent amount of storage i guess within there as well but just on the roof here another thing i want to mention the sunglass holder it's almost completely integrated in to the ceiling here you almost don't even think it's a sunglass holder until you press it and then you see it's actually a sunglass holder but there's no button that says press or anything like that like you usually find on other vehicles so i found that pretty cool too actually but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this one this is one of the best parts about the gv80 14.5 inch infotainment screen coming standard across the board and it does respond to voice activation it is also a touch screen like i said and there is a circular dial located just in front front of the shifter you can control that with as well but either way bluetooth and audio streaming comes standard android auto apple carplay factory navigation system comes standard for all trim levels and by the way with that factory navigation system you do get three years of free map updates and that's part of the genesis experience as i mentioned at the very beginning of this video so that's another part of the cool little features of genesis voice memo section also wanted to mention that up there if you wanted to let's say not forget something simply record your voice and then play a back at a later date that's pretty cool also ambient sounds and speaking of ambient sounds i always like to do this in my genesis videos let me go ahead and let you guys take a listen here there are several different ambient sounds and they're pretty darn cool to be quite honest so let me let you guys take a listen i'll be right back And so besides that, there are actually plenty more features on this infotainment screen. I feel like I could go on and on. There's a quiet mode where you can essentially cancel out the speakers in the rear portion of the GV80, and then it limits the speaker volume in the front. And that feature is there because if you have small kids in the back and they happen to fall asleep and you want to keep them asleep on a long road trip, perhaps, that is going to help out with that. So I found that pretty cool. Also, of course, you can adjust your climate control settings up on this infotainment screen, as well as your seating settings like heated seats, things like that. There's also your traffic information, weather information you could check out up there as well as your radio settings. And so let me get to that now. A couple different sound systems for the GV80. The standard setup is going to be 12 speakers, which quite honestly is still pretty good. It's more speakers than you usually get with standard sound system. But if you were to go with the advanced or prestige packages, you will get a 21 speaker lexicon sound system. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Hey, hey. 
I'm not sure it gets a whole lot better than that, quite honestly. 21 speakers to start with is ridiculous. Even for the size of this SUV, 21 speakers is more than overkill. Plenty of bass with that, plenty of clarity. It did feel like it was coming at you from all directions. Still like Bowers and Wilkins, that's my favorite, but that was an amazing sound system for the GV80, so absolutely love that. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put this one in reverse, you will of course find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, and if you go with the advanced or prestige packages, you will also get a surround view monitor giving you a bird's eye view, letting you know who or what is behind you and around you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so standard setup when it comes to airbags, this is pretty good, 10 airbags, including one between the front seats. You never see that. You never see that on any other vehicles. And that's to keep the driver and passenger from smashing into each other. If someone were to T-bone you or something on the side collision, that is pretty cool. You never see that on any other vehicle. So I like that. And of course you still get front side, side curtain airbags. There's knee airbags, all that fun stuff. But the center airbag, wanted to mention that that's pretty cool. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system. That's all pretty boring stuff at this point, but also standard for every single trim level across the board. Forward collision avoidance assist, lane keep assist, lane following assist, blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, safe exit assist, there is a driver attention warning system, high beam assist, adaptive cruise control, highway driving assistance too, which is kind of feature similar to a level two semi-autonomous driving system. So that's essentially what that is for the highway. Rear occupant alert then as well. But then if you were to go with the advanced package that we have today or the prestige, of course, you will also get a blind spot view monitor. So if you turn, turn signal on, that is going to display what is in your blind spot up within the gauges up front. That's pretty cool. Also remote smart parking assist and reverse automatic braking as well and so overall let me give you guys my final thoughts here of the gv80 a very original approach to the luxury suv segment i honestly absolutely love it stunning interior quality especially with this dune and navy blue interior that we have here today very nice attention to detail what other manufacturer out there like even bmw and mercedes don't always pay attention to the design on their foot pedals Nobody does that. That's awesome. I love the little attention to detail that Genesis does with things like that. An incredible value for the segment, to be quite honest. It starts thousands less than the competition. Honestly, I could go on about the positives, but let me give you my one constructive criticism for this one. That is this slight need to improve the ride quality. Not to say it's bad because it is plenty good, but when you compare it to Mercedes and BMW with their adaptive damping suspensions and air suspensions on top of that, there is a little bit of room for improvement. But having said that, this one is plenty fun. This is an amazing SUV with an incredible warranty. You got the Genesis experience. You got three years of free maintenance, not to mention the insane luxury and all of the features that this thing comes with. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the GV80 in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you wanna see what's coming next on the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay cold. Genesis definitely made the braking feel. Okay, 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 okay. I'm turning, I'm turning. I did put the signal on, I'm so sorry.